On this episode of Florida Roadside Attractions and Abandoned Places, we begin in the Florida Panhandle in a little town called Carabel. Right here on the river, just north of the Gulf of Mexico. A lot of boats here in the Marine of Carabel. It's a very quiet, peaceful, although overcast, still pretty nice day here on the Forgotten Coast. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome if it's your first time. I am Tampa J. This is Chris the Girl. And we have spent our Thanksgiving here in Carabelle and are spending actually three days, four nights and three days or so um, experiencing Thanksgiving with your family last night. That was such a great time. Really nice. And we'll be here a couple more days and here we are going out and about and uh, checking out old Florida, the Forgotten Coast. There's quite a few things here in Carabelle to do some roadside attractions, um, some wacky things, and some very historic things as well. So we thought we'd take you along with us and within the next couple of days, probably show you where we stayed. Um, but let's not get too far ahead because for right now, there's much ahead in Carabelle. Here we go. And first things first, let's head to downtown Carabelle. We're not too far from it. So you can see it's a very coastal, community there's an old box car there look at that we'll check that out in a little bit and we come to downtown Carabelle crossing Tallahassee Street here in front of the Carabelle Town Center now called Rio Carabelle sign says the Carabelle Town Center was once part of the Franklin Lumber Company mill site owned by James Coombs which operated along the North Shore of the Carabelle River from 1875 to 1928 and now right here on the other side of the building alongside highway 98 florida scenic highway wait for it you ready for this carabelle florida world's smallest police station world's smallest police station sits right here on the corner check this out i don't know folks i don't know about you but i feel like i uh i need to go make a call it's a phone booth. This is amazing. Let's see if we both fit. Chris the girl and I are now inside the world's smallest police station. And there's no cops in here. Nope. At least I can't see. Have you seen any in here? I don't see any. No police officers. No. Oh, okay. And also, no pay phone. Where's the phone? You can't even call the police in here. You're probably wondering what's going on with the world's smallest police station here. What is it? And why is it Chief Alvin Westberg used to be the police officer back in Carabelle in 1947. And he needed a way to communicate back to headquarters while walking the beat out here in the streets. And this phone booth, not the original one, the original one's over in the museum, which we will go by today, used to sit on the northeast corner of Tallahassee Street in 98, actually right over there. Well, they installed this phone booth just for the police officer. Well, town folks, such as younglings and teenagers, started making prank phone calls, long distance calls, on the phone booth and even vandalized it. And the story goes, um, you know, it became quite a thing and it became legendary. And eventually, I think it just became kind of a, an urban legend or mostly just Florida folklore yeah. that this is the world's smallest police station which it was used as a police station so there you go but it's become quite a thing here in Carabelle it's one of their main roadside attractions it's a phone booth I feel like we need to get in there if it had a phone yeah. call Rufus and travel through the circuits of time Cir We're out. circuits of time dude and right across from the world's smallest police station, Carabelle's Visitor Center, and also the Chamber of Commerce, a little store there. And right across Tallahassee Street over here, good old downtown Carabelle, we've got Carabelle Junction, right next to Gander's Hardware Store. Old time looking hardware store. And I think we're gonna get coffee at Carabelle Junction, because we need some coffee. A lot of food yesterday consumed, a lot of turkey with Chris's family, of course, for Thanksgiving. I'm stuffed. Okay, I like this place already. Check out this old 7-Up sign. You're fresh up. Old 10 sign. That thing is uh, seen better days. I like the way it looks, though. Also, a lot of old collectibles in the window. Coca-Cola popcorn buckets. 
And this is the main door here. Soup, sandwiches, pastries, espresso, ice cream, sodas, bagels, and croissants. And it's open. I'm about to go in, but I just noticed this sign up here as well. This place has been here for a long time. Look at that little rocket ship going. And the sign on the door said cash or check, so we had to make sure we had cash. Yep. All right, we got some. We're good. We can't buy the whole store, though. No, we can't. <laughs> okay, this place just screams 1950s. Look at this. We've ordered our coffees, They're prepping them over here. They also do hot dogs, all beef hot dogs, and all kinds of breakfast sandwiches. Two cheese grilled. Oh, that's right up your alley, Chris. Mm -hmm. I like the menu here, the old jukebox. Yeah. They also have a veggie supreme. I like how inside the counter they have all these classic Florida roadside postcards. Greetings from Florida. It's great to be in Florida. Check this one out. Annual intercollegiate regatta on Lake Worth, the Palm Beaches. There we go, $4.25. I heard about these types of places and they still exist. They do. I feel like I just traveled back in time, like Marty McFly or something. So 1955 in here. Coffee's really good. Mm -hmm. Old fashioned mm -hmm. cappuccino, very light. You like that coffee? I do, yeah. It's good. Yeah. Got the vintage booths. Check out all this stuff on the wall over here. Specifically in that case over there, I see a Mickey Mouse and a Mr. Peanut. Hello, Mickey. Wow. This is an old Mickey right here. Check it out. And also there's a pin in here for Golden Gate Bridges 50th anniversary from 1987. Now that's a relic. And also I was eyeing the Mr. Peanut head. Oh, he's a bank. There's an old jukebox in the corner, which I'm gonna show you in a second. I just wanna show you, I just noticed right next to my cappuccino, there's Lakeland bandstand and landing on Lake Mirror, Lakeland. Need to check that out someday. And what do you have here? Oh, flamingos. Oh, I'm, I'm trying to keep my calm right now. Don't want to cause a scene in here. We've got some seven up Christmas over here. Give unto others the man from Uncola, seven up. Try a Frosty Pep, Dr. Pepper, and ice cream. I want a Frosty Pep. I've never heard of that. And over here next to the ice cream cooler, the classic juke box. I don't know if it works, but check out this classic juke box here. This thing is a beauty. You know what they say, don't rock the juke box. Wish I could right now though. Also can't leave without showing you the 7-Up Fresh Up for Thanksgiving. A little sign here and also a Halloween one. 7 up for Halloween. The door handle is a Coca-Cola bottle. Look at that. I've never seen one like that. All right, here we go. Back into Carabell. Busy streets of Carabell. Here's the post office. All right, now we're heading into the Carabell Waterfront Historic District. Still so much ahead. You can make out the river right over there. And there's a couple of shops here. This one, Furniture Decor, Pirate Girls Treasures. Also a vintage shop there and across the street, a little mercantile shop. Oh, I see a flamingo right there. Flamingo. There's some skellies in the window of girl pirates. This is adorable. Oh, this is a cool store. Well, I can already tell. Christmas. They're ready for Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. And this Florida black bear with a Christmas bow reminds me, we are in the Apalachicola National Forest River Basin area. There are black bear, Florida black bear around these parts. We've got a shrimp boat. Look at that. I believe the name on the back of the boat is Rolling Stone. I like that. And speaking of stone, we stayed, we are staying just a stone's throw away, right over there. Over there. We have a somewhere. nice, somewhere. We have a nice water view. Again, I'll show you that in a couple of days mm -hmm. before we leave the place. It's really nice. I can't wait to show them where we're staying. Yeah, I, it's I really, really cool. I really love it. It's one of my favorite places though. Yeah. We've stayed in there. I've stayed right? in general, honestly. Okay, so much ahead. Marine supplies, just right Marine, 301 Marine Street. A lot of stuff out here, right on the front porch. The front sidewalk. I'm just gonna sweep down the side of this place. A lot of boat parts, a lot of boat motor parts. Inboard and outboard. Look at this old Honda 
four stroke motor. Across the street there, Lost Treasure Graphics and Gallery. I've seen, so far, I've seen three art studios here in Carabao. Old railing and stairs that go down and alongside the building out to a dock that has seen way better days. Also, I think there used to be a building that sat right here just in crumbles now. A lookout beyond the river, a marina across the way. You can make out the windows of this old package house, which looks, looks pretty cool. I love the abandoned. The sign on the building says, World Famous Harry's Bar and Package. Relax and lounge. That is not what this was. That is across the street. So it's a sign pointing over there to Harry's Bar. World Famous, okay. Don't know what this was, but we're gonna take a closer look at it, maybe peek inside the window. Look at these windows, Chris. They've seen better days. Yeah, they've seen better days. I like the plants. All, All right, vines. I was gonna say Mother Nature taking a toll upon it. Yeah. All the vines. Also a sign that says, keep out. Okay, here we go. Walk down the length of the building. Checking it out over here, a little bit down there. And now I'm just gonna put my camera kind of up like this so you can see. Take a look in there. What do you see in there? All right, a little sneak peek. And right behind us, if you hear a noise, well, that's the Budweiser man stocking up Harry's bar. There you go, Budweiser truck delivery. Hope you saw something good. I'll know later when I edit this video. Oh, I think we found the river walk, AKA the boardwalk. Welcome to Carabelle's river walk. See anything out there? Uh, boats and marinas and pool houses. And oh yeah. It's just really neat. It is neat. It's a very quiet town. It is. I kind of like it. It's a I nice, like it little getaway. I understand why they call it Florida's Forgotten Coast. Mm -hmm. Also about 30 minutes south of here, or southwest, Apalachicola. Making our way down the river walk. Nice yacht. Must be, it goes to Burt Reynolds or something. Oh, no trespassing. That's a big boat. That's a ship passing by this old crane that they're using to build something out here the boom way up there. I know what the crane's for. Check out these giant concrete beams. That's what that's for. Making our way up the Carabelle River Walk. It's still over here, but across the street, I saw this little shack. What? What is this? Yeah, I don't know. It's little and abandoned. It's got my name on it. Welcome to 503 Marine Street. This has definitely seen better days, as we always say. I'm gonna look right into the window. Oh my gosh. Oh, that stench. Oh, mildew. There's two TVs in there, Chris. We'll grab them. Old box TVs from the 80s. Got the antenna, the rabbit ears sticking out of them. And that old couch in the back. Look at this place. Wow, there's the windows to the right. No rough, nope. No wolf can huff and puff and blow this house down. Little house made of brick right here on the side of the street. Currently sitting abandoned. Chris was pointing out in her video back there there was a bunch of oyster shells along with the cacti. We are in oyster country. And also it's not every day you see cactus in Florida. You do see it though, you do Maybe see it. Yes, yeah, surprisingly, more than one would think. Yeah, that's a cool bicycle rack right across from this old beauty over here. It's a fish. I think that's made of aluminum. That's very cool artwork. I like it, I like it a lot. Oh yeah, that's definitely aluminum. Look at all the oyster shells. Looks like someone had a shucking good time. Did you tell yum, them yum, about yum. the seafood around here? Oh yeah, this is a... Uh, seafood city over here. Home so of the seafood, not just known, seafood I eat it, but. It's it's known specifically for oysters. Yes. Especially, but also shrimp and the horrific blue crab. Blue crab, so those are ooh. the three main things, but there's a lot of like seafood restaurants around here, lots of places that you can buy fresh seafood. 
So it's the place to come. That's your thing, this if is you love that you stuff, yeah. yeah. Right behind us over here, a little pavilion that says History Timeline. These are actually the restrooms, and along the walls, the timeline of Carabelle. And in the early 1800s, this was a bustling seaport. Life changed dramatically with the influx of people from many nations. Large ships of Spanish explorers came in search of gold, conquistadors. Here's a photo of schooner Joseph H. Cooper loading 300,000 feet of lumber in front of the McCassacks Pharmacy right here in Carabelle, actually right out there on the water somewhere. In the late 1800s, the town's first boom, lumber was an important commodity after the Civil War. Rio Carabelle was centered around Coombs Mill, one of the many sawmills that sprang up along the river. That first building we saw was part of Coombs Mill, Rio Carabelle. A coastal gym, 1940s to today, a new place to party. Many tourists boarded recreational boats to fish or just party. Carabelle became a popular destination for Tallahassee politicians, businessmen, and stars from Nashville's Grand Old Opry. There's some photos there today. Also, down below here, crazy about Carabelle, the Pearl of the Panhandle was discovered. Developers began building condominiums with private docks along the river. New subdivisions and businesses sprang up everywhere. Enjoy your visit. I'll tell you what, I sure am. There's still much ahead, my friends. Much ahead in Carabelle. I think we're finally getting close to the end of the river walk. What is going on over here? Oh no, it's a turtle. Not those turtles, a real turtle. In front of this fish filet station, Carabelle get hooked, there is a turtle. Hello, turtle. How you doing? What should we name him? I don't know. I got it. I think he likes pizza. Let's name him Michelangelo. Hi, buddy. How you doing? Having a shell good time, right? Shell yeah. Yeah, I know. Oh, I've made a buddy. Well, it's good to see you. Keep on rolling. Okay, this startled me. I looked up and I saw a bunch of dolphin coming out of the ground. I don't know what they were thinking here. Oh, honestly. It's kind of horrific, but now I'm starting to fall in love with it. Look at all these dolphin. Hello, flippers. And standing on this dock now, this boat backing up here. Across the way, another fishing boat. And an old shack that says Carabelle's River Marina. I think the, the boat's backing up and heading out to the right. It says Dog Island Ferry, Carabelle, Florida, right there on the stern. There it goes. Also, I'm getting eaten up by noceums right now. Little mosquitoes. I'm, I, I'm, I'm holding the camera as still as I can. Oh, uh, ouch. This caution sign got taken out, Chris. It says pipe crossing in this area. Must be a water pipe or a gas line. She could. we don't have to be cautious anymore though, right? Uh, the yeah, the sign's out, yep. Okay, old abandoned seafood restaurant alert. Hey, are the Fertellis in there? This looks awesome, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Just sitting by the road here. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I don't think this has been open for a while. Watch your step. Okay, don't know the name or what this used to be called, but still the welcome sign. And it looks like it closed sometime around Christmas. Got the icicle lights still hanging here. There is still a Christmas tree right in front, inside of the front door. Check that out. The glass is kind of hazy, but there you go. See some of the restaurant inside, and also there's a Christmas wreath around the window, or around the doorknob. Restaurant, seafood, steaks, and sandwiches. The old sign right here on the porch. Okay, wrapped around the porch. This looks like the back patio area, or what used to be. Holy cow. Looks like there used to be a lot of fun and festivities going back here. You can see a stage. Oh, check it out, the old Miller light car was left here, a little cooler car, and there's there was a tiki bar. Here's the back side of the restaurant. 
Okay, I'm gonna go a little further. Okay. Here's the stage area. Looks like there's a couple old bar stools. Got the old Coors Light banners. Caravel, Florida, right there. Okay, I think that was the name of this restaurant. Wild Willies. Oh, watch your stuff. There you go. I was wrong. Wicked Willies. I'm gonna look back. Chris, the girls out front. Okay, here's the old restrooms. Making my way back this way. This looks like it used to be possibly, oh, there's an old cooler. Okay, this was probably the kitchen here to the left. All right, don't overstay my welcome. Let's get back to the river walk. A look at what used to be Wicked Willies. There you go. All right, I'm done, Chris. Still much ahead, right? Here we come. And we're passing back by Harry's bar. Chris pointed out, look. It's a Snoopy. It's a little Snoopy in the airplane. Oh, by the way, Bella is with us. Yes. She's back at where we're staying though. And this is Highway 98 right here. If you go right there, it's kind of a fork past the marathon. You end up over there where we started, but I just want to point out that there's a Christmas tree right there. Right there behind the car. The Carabelle Christmas tree. Approaching the Carabelle History Museum. Now, there are three museums here in Carabelle and they are all free. This is the first one. Might just walk in for a little bit. We're gonna keep rolling. There's other things I wanna show you, but I'm gonna take a look, sneak peek at this museum. Original old Carabelle school bell from the 1900s, early 1900s. There's a picture of the school. And right up there in the bell tower, the bell and the bell right here today. That same one, right before you head inside. And right off the bat, I see a lot of cool things. Even Native American artifacts down here. And a map, a portrait of Caravelle. Hello. 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 Thank you. This place looks awesome. Yeah. A map that depicts all of the tribes of natives here in Florida. We are in Appalachia territory hold a 20,000 year old carbon dated oyster shell fossil in your hand first time I've ever done so wow that's old old photographs city of Carabelle these gentlemen are in the boat in front of the old mill and here's an old steam locomotive this photo taken in 1900 an old diving suit here Check it out. And the old helmets as well. I love how they put the lights in there to illuminate them. Where the forest meets the gulf, turpentine and lumber put Caravelle on the map after the Civil War. As we were saying earlier, there was an old timber, old timber mill here, lumber yard, and here's a bunch of old tools that were used at the mill. Also, check out this old photo. These gentlemen on a log, scribing a turpentine pine, scraping a tree to make turpentine, hacking turpentine, and here, check it out, little buckets on the side of the tree to collect the turpentine. Workers gathering sap from turpentine pines. There's several rooms here, including an upstairs. This is a photo spot. This looks like a, an old jail cell door there, an old prison or something. This is the door from one of the original cells in this room when the building opened as City Hall on May 2nd, 1938. The cells were brigs like those used on ships. So I just learned that we are standing in old City Hall right here in Carabelle. Looks like some uh, Carabelle High School memorabilia behind you. Some trophies, some jerseys, and some photos. Oh, I see class of 43 over there. Go Panthers. And as we saw up front, there's the first Carabelle school. And here's the school from 1929 to 1971. The old brick and mortar. And right here, 1972 to 2008, Carabelle High School. Mullets, Green Devils, and Panthers, the three names 
of Carabelle High School and you were saying you like the mullets the best? De totally. It makes so much sense. Yeah, the mullet fish that is, not the hairstyle. Okay, this is cool because back in the day, a lot of high schools used to take senior trips to Washington, D.C. My grandfather has a photo just like this in front of the Capitol. This one, oddly enough, taken the same year of his senior trip, 1956. So there you go. My grandpa was standing in that same spot. I don't know what time of year this was taken or what time he visited it, but there you go. Grandpa, if you're watching, thinking about your senior trip and you also, right afterwards, went to New York City just like these folks did. So there you go, that was the thing to do back in the 50s, I guess, was take the senior trip to Washington DC and then New York City. Check out the old ice box here. Look at this. We'll make them like they used to. Any milk and butter still in here? And here we go, the original world's smallest police station. This is the booth that was originally installed on the corner of 98 and Tallahassee. Here it is. And there's a phone in it. And some baseball history right here in Carabelle, in this area. A man by the name of John Buck O'Neill, they called him Buck O'Neill, was recently voted into the Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown January 25th, 2022. And here's a plaque, a photograph of the plaque like you'd see up there. Buck O'Neill was the first black coach in Major League Baseball and he's from right here near Carabelle. And if you know your World War II history, you know the Tuskegee Airmen. And right here, John C. Robinson, nicknamed the Brown Condor, was the father of the Tuskegee Airmen. And he was born right here in Carabelle. Hey, where do these stairs go? They go up. Really opens up up here. There's also a Christmas tree. I think they're beginning to decorate it. Yeah. Inside the glass over here. Now there's a glove there. I don't think we should put that on and try this, but in here, these old viewfinders, the old photographs that you would slide down into view. This right here, these are photos from President Theodore Roosevelt's inauguration speech on inauguration day. And also there's some several slides over here in this box. There's two of them in there. And the, one of the interesting things about that boat is it's a freighter, but they outfitted it Mr. Mr. Plant, who was a railroad industrial. Oh, Henry B. Plant, mm -hmm. yeah. right there. Know him very well. He, uh -huh. um, he outfitted it with 16 passenger cabins, and he intended to put it in service between Tampa and Cuba. But he decided, well, when the Spanish-American War came, that interrupted that plan. And then he ended up passing away before he could get anything really done with it. So they sold it to the Pensacola St. Andrews and Gulf Steamship Company up here in the Panhandle. And it was birthed in Mobile, Alabama. And for, from 1902 to 1937, every week it went Monday to Pensacola, Tuesday, Panama City, Wednesday, Apalachicola and Thursday to Carabelle. So if you think about Carabelle's on an island, we're on St. James Island. There were no bridges here until the late 1930s. So everything had to come on a boat or swim or fly in on their wings because mm -hmm. that was the only way to get here. So the tarpon became a more, a very significant part of developing the town and they used to the locals used to call it our queen mary and when she mm. got every thursday when she got to the mouth of the river she would ring her ring she would whistle her air you know her steam whistle and it was real distinct and everybody come out to see who and what came in on the tarpon today so the story that i like to share is about the day it sank so it Captain Barrow, this man here, um, is was the captain. For That's the him whole, right there. Yeah, for the whole time it was in service, and that was he looked like Mark Twain as well up there on that other picture. Oh yeah. Um, captain Barrow had 
two fatal flaws that ended up getting him killed. One of them was he never checked the weather. And he kind of had this attitude about God makes the weather and I make the trip. However, his family says it was more like God makes the weather and God willing, I make the trip. Yeah. Oh, okay. But we're not too sure which attitude was the right one. But anyway, um, he was 82 years old when the boat sank. Oh, wow. And had been the only captain on the tarpon. And he didn't like those newfangled gadgets like radios. So they didn't have a radio. Either one of those things could have saved them in the storm. So they, so they left Pensacola on a Tuesday in 37. They did not know that there was a Category 3, there was a hurricane coming. Hurricane coming. So they ended up getting hit, surprised by a Category 3 hurricane. Everything that could go wrong on a ship with, went wrong on the tarpon. And uh, bye, ladies. Bye, thank you. And they ended up, um, they got, um, big waves took the life, life uh, boats off. And bye, ladies, come bye. back again. Thank you. Mm -hmm. they, you thank you so much. Well, I guess it don't like me. Um, they got, the hole got punched by the cargo and had water coming in. And so then lightning struck the boat and caught the fuel source on fire. Oh boy. So it blew up and sank six miles off the sea buoy at Panama City. So there were 31 crew on board. They were all, um, all crew, no, no passengers. And out of that, there were 13 survivors and the faces of these guys in the trunk are the ones that survived with right, the exception here. of the second mate who actually died saving the captain. Only the captain ended up dying as well. So our hero of my story is this young man here in the newspaper clipping, Adley Baker. And Adley was a young oiler in the um, engine room, very energetic, and had a brand new baby and everything to live for. And he says, okay guys, what are we gonna do to save ourselves? And these, I always think about these guys being the old codgers. The old codger says, oh, we're just gonna all get eaten by sharks. You know, there's nothing we can do. We don't know where we are. We don't know what's what. And he said, well, think about it. We were approaching the sea buoy at Panama City. There's a landmass right there. It has to be Panama City. So we just need to go there and get help. Well, nobody would go. And so he finally said, okay, I'm going. So he starts swimming towards the landmass. And it turned out, he did not realize it, but it was he was 25 miles from shore. Oh, wow. So he gets 10 miles in. And by then, his arms and legs are just cramping and he can't swim anymore. And he starts to drown. And the sound of Adley drowning caused um, a pot of dolphins to come. And they actually... Um, got down in the water underneath him, pushed him to the surface, flipped him over, and held him up in the water so he could breathe. Wow. For That's amazing. As long as it took until he was able to get himself to resuscitate. Holy moly. And so he finally, once he got where he could take charge of himself, they just kind of backed off and followed him, never left him, but they didn't hang there with him. So he's swimming along. He gets a couple of miles from shore and the dolphins realized there were no humans where he was swimming to. So he was not gonna get rescued. So they come back, they get on either side of him. They redirect where he's swimming around the land to a beach over in Panama City Beach where the, there were two guys surveying for a road and they saw him crawl out on the beach where the dolphins took him. And they actually came and got him, took him to the police. The police teletyped Coast Guard and said, Tarpon's down near the sea buoy, um, need latitude longitude for rescue. And they sent a plane, they did circles from the sea buoy, got the lat, determined the wreck, where the wreck was. There were still survivors and they got the latitude longitude, sent it back and then the police sent out to, I mean, a bunch of uh, fishing boats 
to rescue the, the ten remaining people. In the meantime, two of the big burly um, stevedores who didn't think that Adley was going to make it because he was so little, uh, they had grabbed a piece of the boat and were using it like a raft, and they were kicking, they kicked themselves to shore. It's like so, Jaws. So they, <laughs> they saved themselves. So there were ten left, and the fishing boats came to save the ten, and this fella here, Will, the one in this closer picture, Will McKnight was from Carabelle, and Will was terrified of sharks. They had not seen a single shark until um, Will let go of the wreckage to swim to the other, um, to, the, to the boat that was, you know, picking him up. And when he did, a, a shark got after him. And it was like a bad movie where, you know, he's swimming double time and the shark's going, no, 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 no. Guys on the boat are reaching out with the boat hook and they finally got him hooked by his clothes and they gra they pulled him in and grabbed his clothes and just pulled him on the boat just as the shark would have bitten him. Wow. So he managed to um, survive, however, his hair turned white. When he went on, he was about 30 and his hair was black. And when he came back, his hair was all white. Wow. You know? So, but thanks to Adley being brave and the dolphins being a little bit of divine intervention, mm -hmm. I think they managed to all survive. That's wow. awesome. That is amazing. Isn't that an amazing Holy story. Moly. That's a great story. I appreciate yeah, you telling us thank that. Thank you. What's your name? My name is Tamara. Tamara Allen. Tamara Allen. It's nice to meet you. Well, thank you. The history of the tragedy of the tarpon. I, I like know. it. Yeah. Isn't that something? And connected back to Tampa. Yeah, back to yeah. Tampa. Free air for bikes. I like that. Just going to show you this tourist uh, map. Here we are. Actually, right there is where we are. And this shows you where we're going. Actually, over the bridge, right here, this way, there's a lighthouse and also a World War II museum. But first, we're gonna head down a little south of here to the Bottle House. Okay, just a little ways from downtown, we've come to another roadside attraction here in Carabelle. The Carabelle Bottle House. This looks pretty neat. There's a gate over here and it says they're open, but to make sure you close the gate behind you because there's dogs inside. Okay, do not let dogs out. Who let the dogs out? Oh, PTSD. Here we go, you ready? You first. And here's the bottle house, made of bottles. I knew we were gonna see this over here, but I didn't realize there was a lighthouse, a bottle lighthouse as well. This took a lot of time. Notice that all the bottles that are placed in here are different colors. It's pretty fascinating. And there's wine bottles towards the top there. You see the wine bottles yeah. sticking out right there? A lot of things going on out here. I see a, a garden. Over that way and out back, I hear a waterfall. Just so you can see the detail, right here on the wall of the bottle house. Got a lot of square bottles coming up towards the door. I think we're gonna go inside. Here you go, it's not a very big house at all. Also, there's these creepy hands coming out right there. It's got like an egg in it. There's one there and then one right over here. Okay, let's try the door. Also, right outside, oyster shells. Open. Oh my gosh. This is so cool. Whoa. Amazing. Okay, I came back outside because I want to get Chris's reaction too when she comes in here. This? We're going All right, here we go. Okay. Get your reaction. All right. Oh, cool. Isn't it awesome? Yeah. So all the bottle butts that we saw on bottle the Bottle butts. <laughs> is, um, we got whiskey bottles. We got jugs. Wine bottles. You name it. Your favorite beverage. There's probably a bottle of that somewhere in here in the wall. Just took a lot of time. Homemade roadside attraction. I love it. That's amazing. Yeah. We should, we should build a bottle house. 
Okay. It's really pretty. Look down here. Looks like some kind of mural they made. Okay, we must sign the guest book. All right, let's see. The last visitor was here today. Okay. Oh, the visitor was from Ocala. And out back beyond the bottle house. Nice little waterfall into a fish pond. And that alligator startled me. I thought that was real. Hey, gator. See ya. And this bottle house began in 2012. That's when they started to create this thing. And it keeps a building itself. They're going to add more things out here as well. Looks like they're building a bottle bench right now. Okay, still much to see here in Carabelle. We've barely made a dent in the place. Bottle lighthouse. There you go. If you take a screenshot, it'll last longer. Did you get it? Now Hope you got it. Out. Proof, we closed it. We closed it, although we didn't see any doggies. I didn't see any doggies, no, unfortunately. unfortunately. That's okay, we got some doggies waiting for us back home. Doggy, Bella. We are making our way to the other side of Carabelle. I stopped here to check out this old caboose. Very old, sitting here on just a little short railway track before this marina right here on the Carabelle River. Thought we'd take a closer look at it. Now if I was to hop up in there, check it out, the door's open. You can see some of the uh, cabin, the cabin tree and a look all the way down into the inside. This thing looks to be about, hmm, probably 120 years old if I had to guess, if I were an expert. A look back at it, door open on this side as well. Old box car, caboose. And right behind me, the boat's going out towards the Gulf. If you head to the right, you're heading towards the Gulf of Mexico. Also a crow up there on the mast. Hey, what's up, buddy? What's up, Mr. Crow? Now crossing the Carabelle River to the other side of Carabelle. I'm noticing there's also a pedestrian bridge right there to another dock on the other side. And looking inland up the Carabelle River right there, check out the other side. It's very foggy and marshy out there. I'm now passing Carabelle Beach. Look at the old pavilions out there, very mid-century. Old Florida. All right, next stop, Camp Gordon Johnston, World War II Museum, free admission, right across from Carabelle Beach. Look at that. Can't see the water though, it's too foggy. And here it is, we're gonna take a little peek, and afterward, we're going to the third museum here in Carabelle, another free admission museum. Who likes the way I say museum? I do. <laughs> Historic sign down there by Highway 98 says former site of Camp Gordon Johnston training area. So there you go. Kind of sets the vibe as we're heading back up to the museum. Inside this barn here, some vehicles. Let's check this out. Got a Willys Jeep. Classic World War II vehicle right there. And this, check this out Chris, this is a Volkswagen. Type 825 reproduction, German. Punch buggy, olive drab. <laughs> Check out the signage there on the door. KFZ K1, Lurgu. How's your German? Uh, ich nein, not so good. I don't know what I just said. Auf <laughs> And this giant amphibious vehicle here with the signage down below the wheel. I've seen a couple of these in all my years. Camp Gordon Johnston, why here? Various locations around Florida were examined before the War Department selected Carabelle. It's 20 miles of contiguous beachfront along the Gulf of Mexico was sheltered by the offshore barrier of Dog and St. George Islands. The remote location offered privacy, warm waters, and long beaches to land an entire division at once. Ideal qualities for the Army's initial goal of amphibious training. It was also close enough to the eastern seaboard to comply with the U.S. Str strategy of Germany first. The subtropical swampy jungle-like conditions of the terrain complemented the coastal setting, mimicking the remote Pacific atolls 
of combat. Museum hours, Tuesday through Saturday, 11 to five, Sunday through Monday, close. They're open, just gonna take a, a gander. We've got a lot of things to do today, but we're gonna check out our second museum here in Carabelle. Notice all these bricks down here along the base. Former Marines and soldiers. And a ton of memorabilia in here. Just thought we'd take a quick look. Got a lot of things to do here in Carabelle. Left to do here in this video, but definitely want to come inside here. I see a lot of weapons inside the case here. A Russian Mausen Nagant. M9130 rifle. That was the rifle that the Russian military used during World War II. And at the beginning of World War II, the army was still issued the M1903 Springfield rifles, which were used in World War I, and then eventually they got the M1 Grand. The repeating rifles allowed them to shoot eight rounds before reloading. Japanese katanas here on display that came back from World War II. Little theater in here with a documentary going. Here's a photo on the wall in the theater. Camp Gordon Johnston, Carabelle, Florida. Photo by Joseph Cooley in 1944. A couple soldiers here. And there you go. There's the photographer himself, Joseph A. Pooley, Camp Gordon Johnston, 1944. Here's a photo training, check it out, in color. Also taken by Joseph Pooley. They're going through the obstacle course, this gentleman, either repelling or climbing along the wall here. That's a great photo. So along the wall in the back of the theater are all the photos taken by Pooley of training here. Check them out here with the shovels. And look at that, Danny Kay entertaining American soldiers and Sass Sass, I'm no, I'm gonna butcher that. Saspo, Japan, October 24th, 1945. This photo also taken by Joseph Pooley. And that is a really cool photo, folks. Check out all the, uh, the band here, instruments. Danny Kay, gonna be a white Christmas. Bill Moorhead here at Camp Gordon Johnson, again, taken by Pooley. He's got a little kitty. One could spend probably a few hours, if not more, in here digging through all the memorabilia in the history. Okay, moving forward, hopefully we'll be able to see the next highly anticipated roadside attraction, the third and final museum here in Carabelle. Hopefully we'll be able to see it with all this fog out here. Yeah. Check out the World War II Museum if you're in town. You will be shocked at what you find inside. You will. We're pulling out here. Check out all the monarch butterfly right here. You were saying? I, I guess this area is really big on migratory birds and butterflies. Yeah, there you go. Wow. There's a lot of butterflies. It's a ton of monarch there. And I read recently that the monarch butterfly are becoming endangered, if not already, so. This is a rare moment. Holy cow. All right, moving forward. There's an ocean out there, but you can't see it. Okay, here we are, open. This park land was acquired through the Federal Lands to Parks program of the United States Department of the Interior for use by general public. And this, that sign, right after the third and final museum here in Carabelle today. Welcome to Crickard, Crickard, welcome to <laughs> Crooked River Lighthouse Park. Here we go. Now coming up the driveway of the Crooked River Lighthouse. Right there to the left. Looks like the museum is to the right. I don't know if we can go up in there, but. I don't know either. I would really like to. Hello, Crooked River Lighthouse. Very different looking compared to most I've seen in the reel. It's awesome though. Looks like, uh, wow, it goes up quite a way. And it must be some, uh, a ladder or a very steep staircase all the way to the top. Can't imagine not being out of breath once you get to the top of that thing. Here we are underneath it. Looks like the door's open. Oh my gosh, we can go to the top. It's a spiral staircase. Okay, what do you think? 
well. Yeah. 126? Yeah. All right. We could do it, or you. Oh, just me? Could do it. Okay. <laughs> You're more than welcome to. I think yeah. I'm going to do it. Yeah, I think you should. Turkey Trot Stair Climb 2022. Here we go, the day after Thanksgiving. Oh, happy Black Friday, everyone. If you're watching this video, it's Saturday. All right, you're scoping it out. Yeah. Notice the sign right there. It says, leave the tower immediately oh my God. at the sound of thunder or if you see lightning. That's a good thing to do. Which happens yeah. all the time here in Florida. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and it's haunted. What was that? There's someone up there. I think they're okay. Okay, good. <laughs> we were just noticing it says you have to pay five bucks to go mm -hmm. up. So we're going to go inside, check out the museum, and then later I'm going to the top. Coming? Maybe. We only have five dollars. Only have five dollars. Oh, okay. It's the I'll take one for the team then. Yeah, you're going to have to. <laughs> Sorry. We'll be back. Does it look crooked to you? Maybe. This rock right before the lighthouse says it has been placed on the National Register of Historic Places. Okay, now to the museum and gift shop. Let's check it out. Chris the girl on the porch. I like the lanterns. Yeah, third museum of the day. Got some photos, a desk over here, an old phonograph. This was the keeper of the lighthouse. Mm -hmm. His house, okay. Had a nice little fireplace. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you are looking at the Fresnel. The lighthouse light. I think this is the fourth generation one, as the sign depicts. Okay, so this is not the fourth generation. That sign says this is the original Fresnel light. So this was constructed in 1895, the year they built the tower. And as you can see, it's huge. There you are. Hey, isn't that beautiful? It is, yeah. I've never seen something so beautiful with such importance. Think about how important. Yeah. <laughs> she beat me to my own joke. Here's the light behind us now, on the back side of it. Mm -hmm. It looks like something you would see in like a vintage space movie, science yeah. fiction. And there's an old photograph of the lighthouse. Now this, this house right here, is not there anymore. It would be out to the left, but this one, this is the one, the keeper's house, that's the one we're standing in. And also, here's a construction photo from 1895. You can see the men up in the rafters of the lighthouse working. Here I go. Here Wish go. me luck. Good luck. You I'll did. be down at the bottom to catch your fall if you fall. I look forward to shining this camera down and seeing that beautiful smile. So thank you so much. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. I won't see much up there because of the yeah. fog. But here we go. You know what they say. The best part of the journey is the climb. Isn't that Miley Cyrus? I think so. I'll let her sing it. Crooked River lighthouse take two and here we are all right okay here we are 127 steps to the top i'll show you a couple of them very narrow hey i hear someone down there the steps. here i go watch your head this reminds me of the staircase i once climbed in berlin germany oh look at that this is the first window Already making our way up and a stop and a look of what's before me here. Look at this. There you go. Second window, I see Chris the girl. You're on the play set, on the playground. All right, am I halfway up yet? Okay, I'm out of breath already. Okay, there's a sign here. A little ways from that window, one half step past halfway. Made it to the red portion of the lighthouse, looking down the driveway. Okay, there's a landing right here at this window. And I have to say, I'm getting out of breath. 105 steps 
22 to go. And I'm taking a second to catch my breath. A lot of jerky yesterday. Whoa. Okay, now the steps are getting very narrow. They're teeny tiny. Oh. My size 13 hanging half off the back. And there we are. And a sign here to the left says that this portion, it's easier to descend this flight backwards. So make a note. Oh, wow, here we go. Also some flying insect repellent because the mosquitoes are pretty bad. I'm about to step out there, but first I wanted to show you, you can go up towards the light here. We're not permitted to do so today, but I can put my camera up here. You can see the light. Check it out. There it is. Hold on. There you go. Top of the lighthouse. Okay. Down we go. Whoa. It's so quiet up here. A little windy. Look at that view of the fog. Chris, you down there? Oh, way down there. You're the most beautiful ant I ever saw. It was more difficult than I thought it would be. Yeah, very narrow around the top. Check it out, Gulf of Mexico, I can hear it. Can't really see it, I'll show you in a second, but I'm just walking all the way around right now. Can't imagine on a clear day. I see a lot of cool things, even back towards downtown Caravel, which is right behind me. If you listen close, you can see them right there actually. The waves crashing on Caravel Beach, right here on Dog Island. And Highway 98. Comes off truck. Gotta watch your step. Now, it's pretty safe, as long as you don't obviously jump or lean over the rail. Pretty firm up here. And to look down, for what I just crawled up, 127 stairs, steps to the top. Now, towards the top, as you saw, they got a little teenier. Check out the mechanics of the door here. Ooh, watch out, wasps. They're everywhere. Ooh. Now you could access the top of the lighthouse right here as well on the outside. There's a look up. You gotta be careful. A lot of wasps flying around. That's why they have the insect repellent right there. Raid it. Hey, babe, I sent you a photo. Sent Chris a photo. She's right there on the picnic table. And right there's the keeper's house where we just were. Woo, it's a long way down. And one more look at the light before I head down the steps. There you go. Fourth generation. All began here in 1895. It's a long time ago. And as we learned today, that was four years before the hurricane hit. All right, there we go. It's always easier going down than coming up. Oh yeah, this is a lot easier than coming up. Woo! I'm flying. And we made it! Yeah! As I walked out into the bright sunlight, actually fog, 
And we did it, Chris. You did it. We did it. You were like the, you the live lighthouse keeper, and I was like the assistant. There you go. I, you live vicariously. I sent you photos you so did. you could yeah, see what was, was going helpful. on. And it explained what the what the Fresnel lens was. Or I the saw that. Or whatever it's actually called. And I had to send it to you because we were like, how does this work? Because yeah. they don't explain it inside the museum. Yeah, you had to climb. You had to go to the top to find out. Dust on your hat. And there you go. Right here on the shores of Carabel. The Crooked River Lighthouse. Another episode of Florida Roadside Attractions and Abandoned Places in the Books. A series I created back in 2020. It's been a while since I've updated it. And this is the first time I've done so in the panhandle. Wasn't intended, but it just worked out. It worked out well, especially here in Carabelle, Florida, which has a lot to offer in that way. So. And there's much ahead. Mm -hmm here for a couple days. So if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if it was your first time here, please subscribe and come on back because there's much ahead, my friends. Also, check out Chris the Girl on YouTube who was also creating a video today, my beautiful girlfriend here. We're always collabing it up and having a great time together. And what a privilege and an honor to be able to both document experiences and throw them out there for people to watch and both of us we really appreciate that from the bottom of our hearts thank you so much for living vicariously through our endeavors and adventures it means the world to me so thank you guys also i hope everyone had a happy thanksgiving uh shout out to my friends and my family and to you guys of course you're my friends and my family as well i just hope everyone had a great day yesterday and moving forward to December, here we come. Almost yep. Christmas. Yep, almost the end of 2022. So that means Christmas content and yep. also spooky Christmas season mm -hmm. is upon us again. Got a lot of spooky stuff coming up. Yep. Um, all kinds of content here on this platform and there always will be. So appreciate you all for sticking with me. For now, we got to go to the Carabelle IGA buy a loaf of bread because i am hungry for turkey sandwiches leftovers here we come spend time with my parents and yeah Bella and daisy hang out over at the condo okay there's much munch ahead for munch us ahead. Munch ahead see you guys tomorrow and uh know you're awesome know you're loved and know there's going to be bonus features here they go welcome to carabelle iga iga food stores i know a lot about them because i grew up with them living in rural indiana there's a lot of igas specifically the one in newcastle becker's iga and the one in greenfield those are the two my family shopped at sometimes for thanksgiving carabelle iga there you go that's where we're getting bread my first time ever going in an iga really yeah well, it's gonna be fun i never heard of it until literally the other day it's basically a franchise um that you purchase mm -hmm. kind of helps you build your your food store Okay, it happened. All right, it's IGA haul time. Let's see what we purchased here. I had to get the Shark Happen shirt because it's just the most amazing shirt I've ever seen. Legit. Forgotten Coast, Carabelle, Florida. How was your first experience in an IGA, by the way? I liked it. Honestly, I enjoyed <laughs> it very much. The shirts were the first thing that we saw and we had to get it happened. this one for you. Shark Happens, you know what they say. Got the bread. Got the bread. Got a soda. You got a soda. And, and the Christmas trees. Individual servings of the Little Debbie Christmas tree fave. cakes. If you know, you know. These are amazing. We didn't want to commit to a whole box. Right. We got a lot of stuff to eat back We in, really do, but we were both place. like, oh man, those look so good. Gotta so we got those. a single serving. Thanks for sticking all the way to the end of the bonus features. Appreciate you guys. Know you're awesome, know you're loved, and know there's much ahead. And if you stuck around till the end, please let us know what your favorite part of the video was. All right. It's over. over. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. And here she is. Carabella. Yay. All right. All right, we're back. Back at the condo. Someone's happy. Someone's happy. Say hello to Bella, everyone. If you haven't met her, here she is. Yeah, sniffing all up. You'll never believe where I just went.